Hey, welcome to this training on how to pay yourself first as an owner. This is a training for business owners that want to make smart financial decisions. My name is Will Boyd. I am the co-founder of CEO Finance Academy, where we help business owners make better financial decisions. I'm really excited to dive into this one. I was doing a ton of YouTube keyword uh, research and turns out how to pay yourself first is one of the most sought after keyword terms when it comes to small business ownership. So really excited to dive into this. We're going to keep this short. I hope this is useful for you. Um, if it is, will you smash the like button? Uh, feel free to share this with somebody. I really hope this helps. The whole goal here is to provide value. I should preface this. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an accountant. I just, uh, with my business partner, Alex Ingar, we run a small business and we focus on financial training. We started out as, digital, as physical therapists, became digital marketing agency owners, had to figure out our own financial services after hiring a bookkeeper and accountant realizing they were great at telling us what was going on in the past of our business, not helping us think through what do we need to do in the future for our business. And so that's what we focus on now. How do you make smart financial decisions using a bookkeeper, using accountant as your incredible teammates to be able to move forward in your business? So let's dive into this. I have some key things here. I hope this is a short one, but powerful. A couple of things here. I like to start this out with this, uh, this sort of key thing here. Why is it so important that we pay ourselves? Well, paying yourself first creates the habit of focusing your efforts uh, to meeting the main goal of your business, which is to provide for yourself financially, obviously in, a, in, exchange for, uh, in exchange for an amazing product or service. We're not just trying to take money. Yes, you want to provide an incredible product. You want to uh, provide an incredible service. But at the end of the day, it is to do it in a way that's profitable for you so you can stay in business. And a big piece of that is being able to pay yourself. And a key resource here, a book that's really helped us, it's helped millions of people, I'm pretty sure, is Profit First by Mike Michalowicz. Highly recommend that you go read that book. We're going to be talking about some of the stuff. This is our own take on what we do for this. So the stages I'm going to talk to here are not from Mike's book. It's just from what we do and how we help people. Again, this is not financial advice. This is just what has helped us build a seven-figure business while uh, paying ourselves consistently and never having a surprise tax bill. And I'm guessing if you're here, you would like to have the same scenario where you're paying yourself consistently and you don't have to worry about, am I saving enough for taxes? This is a process we use, not financial advice. It's just what's worked for us. Obviously on the tax side, it's far more nuanced given if you know the type of entity you're structured as if you're an, as if you're an LLC, if you're an S corp, if you're a C corp, the state you live in will vary. So this is just a rule of thumb, but it can be really powerful and it's worked for us over the last four years of being in business. So let's go into this. There's gonna be two stages. Uh, that I want to break this down into. Number one is the stage of which you are not making consistent profit yet. This doesn't mean that you're not making any money or you're not making profit. It means that it's not on a consistent basis enough that you could feel confident setting a salary for yourself. So let's say, for example, you're running a uh, an online agency where you do marketing. One month you get two clients and your cash collected is $15,000. Awesome, right? Love it. You feel like we're on top of the world. The next month, uh, you make one sale and it's only for $2,000 a month. It's going to be really difficult to be able to set a salary if you're constantly bouncing back and forth. And let's just be honest, in newer business, that's a reality. And so I want to give you a way to think through this when you're not at a place where we're making consistent monthly recurring revenue. How do you think through this? How do you still pay yourself first and not get caught in the trap that so many owners do, which is they just take from the business when they need it. And they never build the accountability and the habit of knowing how to pay themselves first. So let's go into this. Some key things that we focus on, we teach with our clients. Uh, the first thing is you wanna pay yourself the next month based on the last month's numbers. Please do not take from your business willy nilly unless you absolutely have to. So what do we mean by this is you wanna be disciplined enough to wait until all of your last month's numbers have come in. And the main thing that you're gonna to wanna to calculate is your gross profit. This isn't total expected revenue to be collected, meaning if you made a sale of an agency client and it's a $30,000 deal, but they're paying you $3,000 a month over 10 months, well, we're not going to write down that we collected $30,000 a month. You collected $3,000 from that client. So you want to go with total cash collected minus total cash spent is going to give you your gross profit. And if you're at the stage of not consistent profit, likely you aren't having a ton of cash collected and you're not having a ton of cash spent. I would you know, reckon there are exceptions, of course, but I would reckon that that's going to be your total gross profit. 
Now for us, key thing here, not financial advice. This is just has what worked for us. What we do is we take 30% of that gross profit right away and we set it aside for taxes. What we do is we set up a specific a savings account inside of our, our business. For example, like we use Wells Fargo, you might use Chase or United Bank or whatever, US Bank, and you create a separate savings account and right away we take from that 30%, usually it's from our revenue account, we move that right over into uh, our, our tax, we call it a tax account, 30% of that gross profit goes away. Now, what's cool is we've, we've taken care of taxes for the most part. Every tax situation is nuanced. Again, just a rule of thumb, not financial advice. It's just what's worked for us. And we've never had a tax bill that uh, we've usually had been able to give ourselves money back from how much we've saved in taxes, which is a really cool end of year surprise bonus. Now, in theory, after that 30% is gone or moved, the rest is yours to potentially use to pay yourself. Now, if you're living uh, on bare bones, you might need to take all of this and you might not be able to save anything in your business. It may be that after you take your 30% for taxes, you have $1,500 left at the end of the month and you need all of that to live. Fine, that's what you have to do. You're gonna put it back into, uh, you, you're gonna take that to pay yourself. But here's some key things you wanna think through. One, do you have personal finances saved up? If you don't have personal fa finances saved up and you're running a lean business, one thing you can do is take all of that 70%, even if it's extra than what you need, use that to build up three months of personal reserves. Again, not financial advice, just what we recommend uh, or what we do for ourselves. Then if you have personal finances saved up, you let's say you have 70% left, right? You took 30% of gross profit away and you realize, hey, I have $10,000 left over and I, I only need $5,000 to live off of. Well, what you can do is you could pay yourself $5,000. You can literally move it right into your checking account. Uh, and then what you might say is, well, I would love to start building reserves in my business. I would love to have three months of expenses saved up. Let's say you spent $2,000 in expenses. Well, if you have that extra $5,000 left over, you could move it into a savings account for your business and you're already at two and a half months of business reserves saved up, business expenses saved up. It's an incredible way to look at it. The key thing here is when you're paying yourself first, meaning you think through taxes because it's unavoidable, it needs to be set aside. It's one of the number one, if not, Number one, number two, it's up there. Either one or two top causes of stress we see for our owners is, I don't know what I need to be putting away for taxes. I'm nervous I don't have enough for taxes. So technically we call this pay yourself first. We say, pay your taxes first, then pay yourself. That's how we would view this. So you pay your taxes first, pay yourself right after that. Then anything else can joke. Do you wanna hire, do you wanna do anything? You can look at that uh, based off of that. So this is how we look at paying yourself first when you're in this uh, not consistent profit stage. Cool. Now let's move on to, let's say you're making consistent profit. You have a monthly recurring revenue of $15,000 a month, every month, and you know, it's coming in and you know, it's, it's very consistent. It's been happening for months on end. We move to a little bit different of a, of a process here. A lot of it's still the same, but there are a few nuances that we do change. The first thing is you want to set a reasonable salary that you know, you can pay yourself every single month. So if we know, for example, that we can make $15,000 a month in profit, not just revenue, in profit, I know that I could pay myself $5,000 a month, knowing that 30% of that for taxes is gonna be around you know, $4,500, that's gonna have to go away for taxes. So 4,500, I know I'm gonna be left with a little over $10,000 of, of profit left over after taxes, cool. So I can use that to decide what do I want to set my salary? Let's just say $5,000 is enough for me to live off of and, and a little bit more. That's what my salary is going to be set as. I'm going to make sure that that gets paid to me first after taxes every single month. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to follow the same uh, process as before. You're going to pay yourself the next month based on last month's number numbers. And usually what you're going to do first is do calculate your gross profit, total cash collected minus total cash spent. Same thing here, take 30% of gross profit, set it aside for taxes right away. And uh, so you're gonna do that. And then you wanna move and pay your salary. So whatever your salary is, let's say it's 5K like, like we talked about, and after taxes, there were $10,000 left. Great, that 5K is gonna be moved right into my personal checking account. It's mine to take, I'm the business owner, it's going to go there. Now I have $5,000 left over, I can decide what I want to do. What we recommend doing is uh, first topping off your expenses. So if you have a, a, you know what your expenses are, let's say it's 
three thousand dollars a month and i know i i you know my expenses account for whatever reason i went a little bit over on spending great i'm going to top it back off to the three months of uh reserves that i want to have and then two if there's anything left over so let's say you topped off your expense account and uh, you have two thousand dollars left over we set up another business savings account that we call profit account and that's where that profit sits there and that's what we use for if we want to invest in a future hire if we want to buy a training program if we want to um, you know, really for anything, if you want to get equipment, software, or if you end up having that at the end of the quarter, what we do is we then pay ourselves a owner's quarterly bonus. If we have money left over in our profit account, this is how you think through paying yourself first as a business owner. And I just wrote here why this is so powerful. It forces you to know where the bottlenecks are in your business. So for example, if you can't afford to pay yourself, likely you have a marketing and sales problem, right? We're just not generating enough uh, profit, meaning either our pricing structure's off, so maybe you're bringing enough revenue, uh, but your expenses are so high. So maybe it's a, uh, you know, we're not tracking expenses, we're overspending, I need to be more diligent, I need to be more disciplined in my spending, or, you know, we're not even spending that much, but we're not making enough, we're not marketing and selling enough of our, of our services. The other thing is, let's say the numbers say you can afford to pay yourself, but your account doesn't reflect it. Well, this is where we run into an organization problem or a money belief issue. We have a lot of clients that come to us who have tons of money sitting in their checking in their bank, uh, sorry, their business checking account and never move it out of fear of somehow it's going to cause issues. And it's just a belief thing. And I totally get it. When you're starting out, you don't really know. And, and a lot of us, we grow up with money belief uh, money beliefs that dictate how we feel about moving and shifting money. And somebody who's out there can say, oh, it's just so easy, like do this, do that. It can be really tough when you're emotionally connected to money and you haven't been around people with good money habits. So uh, those are the things, this is why it's really powerful that you pay yourself first. It also forces you to think about what's best for you as the business owner, because I tell this to all of our clients. People say, well, I wanna hire, You know, I, I need to make sure my employees are paid. If you have built a business, it is built off the back of figuring out how to market and sell your services. And that is the most difficult part of any business. It is not providing the services. And I know a lot of us provide incredible services. The most difficult part of the business is acquiring customers. If you can't do that, there is no service to fulfill. So you should always be rewarded for being the one to figure out how to acquire customers. You should be paid the highest for figuring that out, just how we believe. Cool. If this is stuff you need help with, uh, I hope this really helps you figure out how to pay yourself first, how to think through paying yourself first, uh, especially if you're a small business owner, if you have an LLC. This is how we think through this. It's a simple process. Again, not financial advice, just one process that we use that has helped us really, you know, as we've built our business to seven figures and, and really being disciplined about it has been super helpful. So if you need help with this, if you're like, I need help getting my finances organized, I just, I need strategy, I need structure, I need someone to look in on this. You can go ahead and book a 15 minute call with us. It's a 15 minute, we call it a profit call. I have nothing to sell you. It's literally just talking through kind of what's going on. Is there anything to do to help you? If not, no stress at all. Um, and if it's not me with me, it's someone from our team uh, who's more than capable of taking the call. So looking forward to that, if that makes sense for you. If not, we'll catch you on the next video. I hope this helps you uh, start paying yourself first. Take care.